Hi guys, welcome back to Science Sizzler. So in the first episode, we had discussed about the breakthroughs in the year 2021, and I had thought that in this video we will be discussing about uh, you know the potential breakthroughs or the upcoming uh, research domains to look out for in the year 2022. But then I thought let's just put it aside and let's talk about two fascinating research articles one in the field or you can say one which is more practical and the other one which discusses discusses a more fundamental issue okay so the first one was published in nature communications that discusses about uh, a, a way to do do grignard reaction at room temperatures in ambient conditions and the second one basically discusses about a, a violation of the, the woodward hoffman rule you know you might have studied about in pericyclic um, about it in pericyclic chemistry right so these are the two aspects that we are going to discuss in detail so let's dive into the topics okay so this is the first article which has a high utility from a practical point of view that is mechanochemical synthesis now those of you who are not aware of what exactly is mechano mechanochemical synthesis basically using mechanical force in order to carry out reactions okay now you can definitely read some review articles on what exactly is mechanochemical synthesis but in short mechanochemical mechanochemical synthesis is uh, for example ball milling there's a process called ball milling i'll show you some images through which you'll get a uh, better understanding so basically you kind of like grind the molecules okay if you want to react two different molecules you grind them together using mechanical force okay and it has many advantages for example you can do solvent free reactions you don't re require a solvent you can just carry out the reactions um, the second is that the mechanical force see uh, due to friction and all the mechanical force causes some kind of stress um, you know uh, in in uh, or it causes some kind of strain and stress similarly it causes uh, the strain and stress in molecules also because of which the, the reactions um, happen all right and uh, one more advantage is that some most of the times you do not require any kind of heating those reactions can be easily done at room temperature so there are a lot of advantages of mechanochemical synthesis so what these authors these are from japan hokkaido university um, it's a fascinating paper because what they have done is uh, i don't know how many of you have experience of putting reactions that with Grignard okay Grignard reactions because generally you require inert conditions inert conditions means you cannot expose it to air you need to put those reactions in nitrogen atmosphere or some other uh, you know some other in inert atmosphere and secondly you have to do the reactions in dry solvents okay so what exactly are dry solvents dry solvents are basically solvents which are devoid of any water okay they, they are free of any water because even a small amount of water is there you know in grignard reaction what will happen once the grignard reagent is formed okay rmgx it will react with the water molecule and you know it will basically get neutralized so the grignard reaction will get neutralized that's why we require dry solvents so what these authors have done is amazing that is they have done this reaction uh, in air okay first of all that means no inert atmosphere is required and secondly no dry solvent is required so this is a very fascinating work so let me just quickly go through this article to give you an idea so this is the reaction setup you can see that there, there, this is the ball milling setup wh wherein you add the chemicals there is a small you can say ball like thing that is inside which will do the reaction okay and as you can see over here uh, this is the reaction with thf basically small amount of solvent they have added to this some phenyl bromide they will take they will add magnesium to it do ball milling for 60 minutes in air okay and then you will get this grignard product and then if you react it with a uh, uh, aldehyde in this case they have taken aldehyde you will get the subsequent product okay and you get the product in very very high yields so a lot of researchers in this field were very fascinated with this particular uh, work that they have done and the best part about this is this article is free okay i mean it's open access so you, anybody can read uh, this so this is the ball milling setup that they have utilized you can see this is uh, the setup there's a small ball and there's a jar in which this reaction was done okay uh, now coming back to um, the way i told you that they have focused a lot on the presentation aspect okay what i mean by that is if you see the kind of reactions they have done or the kind of experiments they have done so this is a very simple so to say uh, even though it is a very practical um, you know research study but on the other hand it's very simple okay so this is basically a reaction that has already been done okay grignard reaction is, is, is was like discovered by victor grignard so since 1900 it has been it has like it has like the researchers have been following it so you can understand that this is a very well known reaction so they have come up with a way to simplify this reaction okay but to publish it in a, a high impact journal like Nat nature communications the presentation or the kind of experiments that they have done is very very fascinating for example to confirm that uh, this uh, this uh, 
Grignard has been formed. They utilize this near edge x-ray absorption fine structure spectroscopy okay so what that basically reveals is and they have done a lot of other experiments which you can definitely read through so basically this is uh, basically this particular spectroscopic technique the near edge x-ray absorption fine structure spectroscopy what that uh, is used for is chemical character characterization of particularly metals okay like if there is a metal present in the in, in the in, in in the chemical matter and this is uh, what they had prepared and this is the simple magnesium so you can see simple magnesium over here is what is is having a different kind of uh, you can say spectra whereas you know mg2 plus okay that that is magnesium in grignard reagent what will happen the magnesium will be in 2 plus so you can see that in 2 plus the both the spectra are matching so using this technique they were able to find out that the magnesium is actually existing in 2 plus oxidation state okay secondly they did another experiment which is again something that we study from a fundamental basis so let me just directly go through that experiment so what they did was you can see over here they did deuteration experiment so what they did once they did the ball milling process okay so once that was complete what they did was they added deuterated acetic acid okay that means instead of ch3coh the hydrogens are have been deuterated and you add cd3 c, c double bond od okay and what you will observe that if in grignard reaction you add some water what will happen the grignard reagent gets neutralized right because water acts as a source of uh, hydrogen okay h plus and that hydrogen will go and basically get attached over here because this is a carbon nucleophile okay this concept we study so what they did they just added deuterium and what they found that on adding deuterium it got deuterated so either there was some deuterium or some hydrogen over here and this can be easily confirmed by a proton nmr spectra so that was another way by which they prove the mechanism that what is the mechanism so you see these are simple experiments that we do study about in masters but this is how you can uh, you know um, uh, apply it practically so anyway this particular uh, article was quite fascinating and it has taken a lot of people in this field by surprise because generally uh, grignard reactions were uh, considered you know to be like i mentioned to be done in inert conditions only so this has also opened a way for you to do certain already known reactions somehow in uh, you know in in ambient conditions so if you can do certain reactions which require a lot of difficult conditions lot like inert conditions high temperature or or you know dry solvents if you can carry out those reactions uh, or you, if you can find ways to carry out that reactions in ambient uh, conditions um that would be some fascinating research okay and subsequently another article came in angiochem uh which is similarly based on the same concept of ball milling uh, this was published right after this i think around 24th december 2021 and again this article is also available publicly i mean you can access it and uh, here here what they have done is using ball milling they have done formation of carboxylic acids okay so as you can see over here let me just zoom in a bit yeah so you can see uh, uh they have used this uh, your phenyl bromide and they have used this what they have used carbon dioxide so in the previous article you saw what kind of steps they had taken over here they are introducing carbon dioxide and same ball milling they have done and what they found the carboxylic acids are generated this next article addresses a more fundamental issue and uh, the corresponding author of this particular um, article is kn hawk uh, you might uh, be remembering him from hawk's model okay for asymmetric induction and asymmetric reactions so um and the lead author of this article is actually an undergraduate researcher that means a student who is doing bsc okay bachelor's basically um so that was that for me was quite fascinating to know that uh, you know a undergrad researcher is getting published in jacks that's a great thing um anyway so the um the issue that is being addressed or the you can say violation that I, that is being addressed by this article is related to your woodward hoffman rule okay and uh, so basically there is a compound uh, called uh, sesquiu ful fulvaline so you can see over here now you know these kind of molecules if you look into this once it undergoes your electrocyclic reaction okay what should happen is that you should obtain the cis product instead you observe a trans product okay um a simple uh, thing is like if you have opposite uh, you know like opposite geometries and uh, you are cyclizing it 
for a 4n plus 2 pi system right yeah this is a 4n plus 2 pi system so for 4n plus 2 pi system when you are cyclizing they are in opposite direction so there should be disc rotatory movement and you should end up with a cis product okay but over here you end up with the trans product so this was something which was uh, a, a kind of like a exception and woodward hoffman had stated that there are no exceptions to these rules means means there are no viol violations of the woodward hoffman rule but after that subsequently lot of uh, exceptions were seen okay so it's not that exceptions weren't seen but exceptions were there but they were explained by various steric factors okay like somewhere there was some unsta instability or something of that sort and they had observed so using a computational approach basically the authors of this particular article have found out that the reason behind this is basically okay so if you look at the structure let me just uh, go back to the structure if they have shown so they have done a lot of complex computation studies and what they have found out is this system actually um exist in the form of a what you call in exist in the form of a um tropelium ion and cyclopentadiene ion okay so this is a highly polarized molecule okay so if you look at this molecule over here just imagine try and imagine this there's a negative charge at this position okay so this will exist as a cyclopentadiene and just imagine there's a positive charge on this okay so this will act as a tropelium ion okay basically this will act as a tropelium ion okay and tro tropelium ion you know are stable due to aromaticity and similarly the cyclopentadiene ion is also stable due to aromaticity so what they have proven is that such systems actually exist are highly polarized uh, because of which the uh, woodward hoffman rule cannot be applied to them okay and what they are actually doing right now is addressing a very fundamental issue so they have mentioned it over here let me just show it to you uh, that we are now seeking to evolve this hypothesis into a general theory of pericyclic reactions of polar systems so this is something that you would uh, end up seeing maybe in, in a in a in a few months or years uh, or in your textbooks also maybe later on you'll start seeing that uh, how the pericyclic systems vary for polar systems okay so this is again a fund is a is a is a quite a f uh, fascinating research and uh, i mean see uh, the point over here is it's actually a very simple uh, explanation so to say because if you look at it and if somebody tells you about this exception you might have studied about fulvalines like you know you see questions in the csi net examination on the dipole moment of fulvalines okay and there you there you imagine that they exist in the polar form so the same concept uh, you know could if you thought about it maybe some of you might have got this idea but then again writing it down and proving it uh, requires a lot of uh, like ex basically executing this research requires a lot of hard work and and kudos to them uh, for this particular work Uh, which addresses a fundamental issue right so anyway i hope you found this video helpful if you did please give this video a big thumbs up it does require a lot of effort so it it would really uh, you know push this video to more and more uh, students and i want them to have a look and get an idea on what they can expect in the future so you know a a a, a model for the polar systems uh, is something that you would definitely be seeing in your textbooks and maybe a few years down the line all right So thank you for watching and see you in the next video very soon. Hey guys, so I am a verified educator on an academy and along with that I am also available on the Unacademy Plus platform where I am taking live classes along with other educators. So in case you are interested in attending the live classes, you can subscribe to the Unacademy Plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETHI and that will give you 10% discount. All right. And in case you are not interested in attending the live classes, you can watch the free courses that are available on the Un Academy. For that, all you need to do is go to the Un Academy website or download the Un Academy Learning app and search my name over there. That is A C T. Once you do that, you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the Un Academy platform. All right.